What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to Championship Week here at the headquarters. It is week 16, which is obviously the most important week. If you are joining us, that means you're probably in your championship. And every Thursday, we are joined by Dr. Jesse Morse of the Fantasy Doctors to talk about all the relevant injuries and hiccups happening around the league. We are blessed with a very short list because, as Dr. Morse noted right before uh, takeoff here today, by this time in the season, if you are, you know, dealing with a multi-week injury, just kind of get thrown on the IR. So that's, you know, riddling down the list a little bit. We have a few guys to talk about, but not anything really major that is going to cause you to, you know, have a conundrum with your sit starts. We'll start off with the quarterback position, uh, as we always do. Matt Stafford's on the IR. Jameis Winston's dealing with this thumb fracture. Now, I thought – we had talked about he was not necessarily a fantastic play last week. Obviously, we were a little bit on the uh, wrong side of that one. But the math added up. He had been dealing with this fractured thumb or whatever. Uh, he's without now Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Scotty Miller. Anything new on the injury front? It didn't really look like that held him back whatsoever, but I guess Winston's going to – I mean, if that's him held back, Jesus. I mean, he, he, I think he's the first guy ever to go back-to-back 450-yard passing games. Yeah, I saw that stat. I mean, I started him in cash in my cash lineups, uh, and it wasn't – I mean, I barely cashed. But there was other reasons, but he <laughs> yeah. was a freaking monster, man. I mean, I understand he has a ton of interceptions throughout the year, but whew, he he just a gunslinger, man. He's like Brett Favre. Like, that's who it reminds me of and from a statistical perspective. Yeah, so no concern with the thumb going no, forward? Not at all. No, right. I mean, if he couldn't do it last week, shit, well, I don't know. We, we, I ain't worried. Yeah, so he's got a great matchup with Houston. That should be a game where the over-under is probably around like 51 or 52 points right now. Could be exciting, but he's without all his weapons again, so I'll probably relay the same concern that I had last week. I don't know, but Jameis, I guess, is just going to throw up the points. So Perryman, uh, Howard, maybe Brait, you know. It's like Watson's just, there. I don't know if his talent translates to production. Yeah, I don't, other know, I don't even know if the weapons matter at this point with Jameis because he's going to chuck it downfield, and he's going to chuck it downfield a lot. So – that, yeah. That's really all we can take away from it. Moving over to Dak Prescott. Now, he seems like he's a little more banged up than we thought. Cowboys backup quarterback Cooper Rush took the majority of snaps for Dak Prescott at Wednesday's practice. He's dealing with this shoulder injury. This is the first time Pre- Prescott's ever been a limited participant in practice in his career. This seems like it's a little more dangerous than we originally anticipated or that we even knew about as the public. And this obviously translates over to the rest of the team because Mm -hmm. there are a lot of teams that are probably in the championship with Amari Cooper or with Michael Gallup as a possible flex player or whatnot. So uh, what are your concerns for Dak Prescott right now? Like what is he dealing with, with the shoulder and should we be concerned when it comes to his weapons? Cause they have such a good matchup against the Eagles this week too. Oh yeah. That's a great spot. Uh, So initially we knew he he had fractured his finger, but they weren't worried. They said it was kind of uh, in a good location. It it wasn't going to cause many issues. Then today we hear that he's dealing with a AC or a shoulder sprain and his throwing shoulder, which is concerning. These hurt, like even the mild ones hurt. Anything out in front or over across the body, which is in a throwing motion is essentially that, is going to use the AC joint. So the problem is he's going to try to give it a couple of days to calm down. And then they're going to probably try to block it and put an injection directly into the joint before the game. If he takes a shot, if he hits the ground with his shoulder, he may re-tweak it. If exactly. he gets lucky, he can function and play. So he's definitely... A, a semi-risky play himself, but the matchup is just incredible. It was on the throwing shoulder or it wasn't? It's a throwing shoulder, yeah. So that's – is that – if he gets the shot, that's not going to hinder his functional ability? Because, like, with the – No, not because you know, this like, is a – this is a sprained uh, ligament. It's more of a pain tolerance. Think of it that way. Because, right. so yeah, this is about it with the running backs, and it's just, like, a matter of getting hit. You know, you just kind of lower your shoulder and run right. – and whatever but with the quarterback obviously there's a ton of throw, yeah got to go through so structurally this is not a part of the shoulder that I'm worried about in terms of throwing accuracy I mean he's going to have it uh some issues but if if they block it and numb it up which means you just put lidocaine in there and you don't put any steroids then there's a chance he doesn't feel a lot of the pain and he's able to function okay uh, if it's a that's a grade 1 if it's grade 2 then he's got some partial tearing and I don't know if he's going to be able to just sling the rock effectively even with a block like it's just it, i don't think it's gonna be enough okay this is what james connor had or has I, he's not healed yet and, and but james connor probably has a grade three which is why he took him forever to get back i mean it took him what, a month maybe six weeks is this what you um, said he's gonna have to have surgery on after the season or no maybe i mean it's hard to tell obviously we don't have access to his images so it's hard to tell but I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up having surgery because he just feels like it doesn't feel right i saw a, a kid i think it was yesterday 
that ended up having to have surgery on the same injury, same grade and everything, because he was a big bodybuilder, a big weightlifter, and he just, he, he couldn't get comfortable anymore. So he had to fix it and put a plate in there. Such fucking unfortunate timing too, because this is the biggest game of their season, right? They're playing. Yeah. I mean, it's do or die, right? I mean, yeah, so you, you need to win this game. You kind of assume that like, even if Dak is at fucking 50%, 40%, he's gonna, he's gonna try to at least suit up. So I think in that sense, it makes him an injury risk because this will be a game just given the context of where they're at in the season that he'll try his hardest to push through, which gives him, you know, that higher risk of re-injury. So uh, Dak is a guy that I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about if he's been in my lineup or a super flex guy, or you're, you know, you're battling between Dak or another guy in that mid quarterback one range, you know? Yeah. I mean, and, and Amari traditionally roasts the Eagles, man. He loves the Eagles. I mean, everyone roasts him this year. Like Oh, right? this year. Yeah. But it, traditionally he's had good luck with them. So, uh, Zeke has looked quite good. He's started off what number, f- I think he's number five right now, a, a, a running back five or six. So he's definitely up there. Um, but overall, I mean, he looked great. Pollard looked great in limited time last week. So maybe they run a little bit more or just dump off passes. So, 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 uh, he doesn't have to throw down the field as much. Yeah. I mean, they're um, certainly going to try. It's just not a defense that's necessarily, uh, you know, allows you to run the ball with a lot of success. Correct. Why yeah. it's such an intriguing injury to you yeah. know game plan around it's, and put into context. Um, definitely, yeah. Uh, and it, it's this isn't going to heal in four or five days, so they're going to try to uh, duct tape them back together and, and see if he can sling it for a week or two to get it to heal more. But I don't know how effective he's going to be. If he gets lucky, he doesn't tweak it. He'll be effective. If he doesn't get lucky, he's going to re-injure it, and then the ball's going to be flying everywhere, uh, or he's just going to they're just going to sit him because it's going to be so bad. That, that he's a, he's a detriment to the team as opposed to a compliment. Okay. Well, uh, for, for all y'all out there in the audience right now that have him on your roster, make sure you're following Dr. Morrison, the fancy doctors over on uh, Twitter and their YouTube channel to make sure that you're kind of up to date and, and having their up to date opinions on uh, what DAC status is at the moment. Now, uh, another intriguing situation that makes it really hard to you know decide what to do with your lineup, given the context is the Minnesota backfield. We have Dalvin Cook, who re-injured the shoulder again. We have Alexander Madison, who has the ankle injury, missed week 15, did not practice at all, which tells you that he was probably 50-50 to suit up during this upcoming week. We don't have a lot of information with the Minnesota backfield. We saw Mike Boone come in, who was fantastic in the preseason. He's a great athlete. Uh, He ran at the end of this game, 13 for 56, two touchdowns. So he pretty much becomes the guy in that backfield if Madison and Cook both miss the game. Problem is, they play on Monday night. So unless we get more information beforehand, it's going to be really hard to trust any of these guys because Cook's going to be less than 100%. Madison, I I don't know what his status is going to be considering he didn't practice. And I don't know if you want to play any of these guys if they're in a timeshare, you know? So there was some rumblings earlier today that Madison is going to be out. Boone is going to run the backfield and Dalvin Cook is strictly the emergency backup. Mind you that Madison... Uh, missed, as you said, completely last week. And he's dealing with an ankle. My suspicion is this is a pretty significant ankle injury. If it's been 10 days and he, or give or take, and he really hasn't even moved, like nothing, he hasn't done anything. Right. So that makes me think it's either a high ankle sprain or a very severe grade two ankle sprain, assuming he didn't break it. Dalvin Cook actually suffered a new injury. It it wasn't a re-injury. It was the opposite shoulder. Okay. Okay. And I recorded a video on this and I had to review the video itself to see exactly what had happened. And it didn't look that bad. My suspicion is he's got an AC sprain, just like Dak does, different than his initial injury. He could have had a stinger. That's a possibility. Uh, And we know from Jordan Howard that, you know, some of these are okay and some of these are a headache. And and there's a small possibility he could have irritated the SC joint in the other side, so the other part of it, which is possible. I don't think he dislocated his shoulder. If he did, he definitely would be out this week. They probably would have told us that. My suspicion is it is AC joint. I think he will be available. I just don't think he'll probably play. The problem is, A, as you mentioned, this is a Monday night game, and B, this is a very important matchup versus the Packers. I think that if they win this, they get the north and they get home field. Right? Am I right? So um, that is kind of where they need him. The issue with Boone, and there's not an issue, he's a stud and he's a preseason monster, and he looked good last week, is that he didn't even get like 40% of the snaps. Like CJ Ham was in there for more than him, I want to say, and then there was... Yeah, I'm, 
Uh, and Dola, I think, was in there too. Gula got some too, but it wasn't like if you look at the entire game, he didn't get that many snaps because Dalvin Cook played a lot prior to getting mm-hmm. injured. So he took some of it. And then CJ Ham, I'm not necessarily worried about from like a touch perspective. He could take 30% of the snaps, but you could operate with two running backs on the field at the same time. So I'm not worried about that. I mean, I think Amir Abdul will scare a lot of people away unnecessarily. I think Mike Boone is the play, but like the problem is like we're hearing conflicting reports. The yeah. Vikings, you know, the Vikings coaching staff's like, yeah, he'll be fine. He'll be ready to play. Adam Schefter comes out and said he's, he'd be surprised if we saw him again in the regular yeah. season. And when Schefter tweets something like that, it usually speaks volumes because Schefter doesn't just come out with like random. He, he's he's usually on the money. He usually has some kind of source or he knows the situation at hand. So for him to come out and say that makes me think like, yeah, it'd be shocking to see Dalvin Cook. And what you said probably makes sense, just having him there for an emergency thing. So if Madison is out, I'm pretty confident with Mike Boone rolling in as, a, as like an RB2 for your championship week. Yeah, I mean, um, I hope you picked him off the wire, uh, even if it's for defensive purposes, and you're not going to start him. But it's kind of an unfortunate situation for your championship to come down to a Monday night game and – that game to be decided by a running back that is 50-50 at best, uh, both Boone and likely Cook. And if I remember correctly, the Packers are not the best versus the run. So no, they're real bad against the run. So, so like this is like a good team. spot. So it's like, damn, like you couldn't have been like a worse combination of good things. Yeah, they've allowed a lot of fantasy points. Cook uh, Cook shredded them for like 190 and a touchdown earlier on in the year. Yeah. This is a team that just, you know, donates them. So it would have been a smash matchup, but – Again, we just need something out of Vikings camp to solidify what we need to do with our lineup. So stay very, very in tune with the situation going on over there. Staying within that division, I mean, we have the Detroit Lions backfield. I just want to touch on this quickly because, I mean, you're not playing Bo Scarborough, obviously, even if he is healthy and active. Um, he's dealing with this rib injury. I believe he got a limited participation at practice today. The interesting player here is Carrion Johnson. And he's coming off a very extended absence. I, I don't even remember at this point because, you know, fantasy works in like stages where it's like that seems like a lifetime ago and carry on. Oh, that was like a different – was, yeah. uh, was it a knee injury? I don't even remember. I want to say it was a knee. I, I'm going to have to go back to be honest with you. And, okay. uh, yeah, let's, let's pull some information up on there. I just want to get your take because if Bo Scarborough is out, like they don't have anyone else in the – yeah, it was a knee. He got put on the IR. If he is – I want to say it was a pretty significant MCL sprain if I remember correctly. Yeah, so he's been gone for a while, and my, my thing is, like, if Bo Scarborough's out, can Kerryon Johnson, like, come back from this injury right away and uh, perform effectively on 15 touches or so? Do you think that's in the range of well, outcomes? The problem is that he never got a full, full workload, even when he was healthy. Mm-hmm. So it's like now you have him coming back in the first game, and you expect him to be effective on probably 10 or maybe at best 15 touches. It's like – kind of a lot of risk for a championship matchup. I mean, not something that I would personally probably do. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely long. getting too cute. But I, I wonder if, like, maybe carry on's a little bit of – because he was not even on my radar. I was like, oh, he's coming back from IR, literally don't care, even if both Scarborough's out. And the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I don't know. Maybe he just kind of pushes his way into 15 touches because they don't want to throw at David Blow and, you know, uh, if both Scarborough might miss the game and Ty Johnson's done absolutely nothing. Jaden McKissick, isn't McKissick hurt too now? Like, I, I didn't even know what's going uh, on. Uh, no, I don't, haven't heard any details about. So both of those guys kind of killed me this past week. Um, McKissick and Ty Johnson, I thought both would do a little bit. They didn't do anything. And then yeah. West Hills, or whatever his name is, they called up on the practice squad and he sneaks two touchdowns. That's funny. Uh, uh, West so Hills Carrion went to IR on October 22nd and underwent surgery. We don't know the specifics. My suspicion is if he had surgery, it was probably a meniscal tear, maybe a significant MCL tear as well. Uh, LCL is pretty rare. ACL would have been done for the year. Everything else is just not very common and uh, definitely wouldn't have been back this soon. So it makes me think probably a pretty significant meniscal tear, maybe uh, uh, some decent tearing of some of the ligaments around uh, that they're just trying to reinforce. But I just don't have enough faith in him, especially in the first week, especially in championship week. Like, Yeah, uh, it's a tough week to go out there. Depending on what you, how much, how crazy you play, whether it's just for pride or money. It's a lot of, there's a lot of risk there. I, I think there's better options. DeAndre Washington, as yeah. Josh Jacobs, is, uh, has been ruled out for mm-hmm. 16, week 16. With his shoulder, I don't know why he's just not on IR. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. It's another, probably a safer spot for you if you had to choose. Yeah. Um, funny note about Wes Hills. No one knows who Wes Hills is. No one knew who he was. When I made my uh, my draft guide last year, we did a dynasty guide first, and we did prospect write-ups on all 
of the skill players coming into the year. And Wes Hills was the first running back I did my write up on. I remember he went to slippery rock and he's like this, I'm pretty sure he's like a 23 or 24 year old rookie. And he <laughs> went to like six different schools and he's like six two two twenty five. So he intrigued me. And supposedly he ran like a four, four forty and he was putting up like 2,700 rushing yards a year at these like division two colleges and shit. So he had always intrigued me. And in my dynasty drafts, like earlier on in the summer, I would draft him, have him on the practice squad. And I was like, Oh shit. When his name just randomly popped up again this Sunday, I was like super excited about it. Cause I had to have been like one of seven people in the country who actually knew who Wes Hills was. Yeah. But Cause I, most people are like, ah, I don't know who that dude is. And then uh, no one played yeah. him. Of course. I can't and believe I knew who was. Freaking touchdowns. Yeah. So there was, um, as most people, well, some people may or may not know the, um, the championships for DFS, uh, namely uh, FanDuel and DraftKings, were last Saturday. It was Sunday, yeah, Miami, really. Right? Yeah. Uh, one was in Miami, DraftKings, and the other one, uh, FanDuel, was in Puerto Rico. So, I mean, you're talking big yeah. money, like, interesting location, especially since it was on the same day. The DraftKings tournament was 180 tickets. The tickets, you can't buy a ticket, so it's you have to you have to win a tournament to get in, and they're usually very expensive. So you're thinking 10 to 15, maybe 20 grand to honestly get in. Like they're not cheap. The winner takes home 2 million, right? So this is a big deal. There was somebody, one of the one of the pros started both Ty Johnson and JD McKissick as their top two running backs. Ew. Imagine if either or one of those touchdowns went to either of those. Maybe. Like, yeah, yes. right? But that, but that was just crazy. I was like, oh, what are the odds that this dude who no one ever even thought of starting ended up scoring, he scored both of them, you know? But it was just, it was interesting. Yeah, that is that's very uh, fortunate, obviously, for certain people. Yeah. Uh, let's head over to the wide receiver position. Uh, and like half the list this week is just Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, we know Godwin, Evan, Scotty Miller are all going to be out with the hamstring injuries. They're probably out for the remainder of the season. So we don't really even need to talk about them from a redraft standpoint. Julian mm-hmm. Edelman is a guy that intrigues me because I'm going to have to make a sit start decision with him. He's been like on the injury report basically all year. This is the oh, first. This was the first week that it actually seemed like it act, it affected him, right? Because he's been dealing with uh, he's been dealing with a, a, a like a plethora of injuries now. Oh. And it's getting to the point, you know, knee, shoulder, um, and now I think it's limiting his snaps. So it's becoming a problem for people throwing him into his lineup, where he's usually like a very tough dude and can play through uh, these injuries for the most part. But now, you know, championship week, you want to start Edelman because you know the Patriots don't have anyone else to go to. But right. at this point, the way he looked last week and the way um, things are going for that offense. I mean, you played on 62% of the snaps last week after going and playing like basically 90% of the snaps or more every other. He's been a full-time player, and then all of a sudden it randomly dropped down to 62% last week. So don't know if that was game plan, don't know what it was, if it was load management, but it's like, what do we do if we're fantasy? So uh, I watched most of this game. Um, uh, I followed all of it, but I watched most of it, and he looked awful. Like, he looked he was hobbling like crazy I believe it's I don't know if it's right foot or left foot one of the one of the one of his feet is really bothering him he had an issue with the opposite foot last year that ended up causing a lot of issues uh he's got shoulder he's got a bunch of stuff so the issue it's not his shoulder I don't think it's bothering him uh it's his foot and with the game kind of just when it went out of uh got out of the way I think they just ended up being like yeah I mean we need you but we don't need you like he was basically a decoy the entire he he couldn't make his cuts he couldn't he just he didn't look good at all Brady's elbows is banged up pretty good and he's not making uh the best throws um and father time is catching up with him unfortunately I think Edelman maybe plays this week because this is a very important Saturday game versus the Bills um the Patriots can't lose the uh AFC title this weekend but they can make it very interesting um uh, so um, also fall the far behind. They, I think the Ravens lock up home field if if the Patriots lose. Not, if the if the Ravens win, they lock it up regardless. But okay. yeah. um, but no, the, see, the the way it's working right now is that the Patriots technically still have the division. But if the Patriots happen to lose the last two games, and the last one is versus Miami in Foxborough, so I'm not overly worried about that. But they have been playing pretty awful. If the Bills happen to win the last two games, one versus the Patriots and one versus whoever they play in Week 17 they can win the division and that brings the Patriots from home home field to traveling and wild card game, which is a huge shift. That would be awful for them. I think he tries to play it out. I just don't have much faith in him. I think they're going to try to use Sanu. I think they're going to try to use white, but this offense is God awful right now. It is so bad. 
It's so bad. Like, yeah. it's painful for me to watch. Like, Jacoby Brissett, or not Jacoby Brissett, um, uh, the Dorsett is what I meant to say, Bill and Burr. Myers both got their snaps dramatically decreased. Nikhil Harry got bumped up into the 60s, I want to say. Lacoste got a little bit, and then the running backs are, are sharing the workload. So, like, they're trying to help, but Edelman is his, his go-to. He's just so banged up. Like, it's really hard to trust Edelman this week, even though he's super reliable. Yeah, I, I'm probably going to pivot elsewhere. I don't think I'm going to be playing Julian Edelman this week in my, in my lineup, unfortunately. Um, now, DJ Chark is, is interesting as well because, it's a, you know, it's a great matchup. Um, and they had a great matchup last week, which he missed. And Conley yep. filled in, got eight targets, scored two touchdowns. Oh. With Chark dealing with this, like, ankle-foot injury, specifically, like, what do – do we know what the actual injury is and what his effectiveness might be, even if he does come back this week? So when I see him in a cam in a boot, a cam walker boot, mm-hmm. and on a scooter, I think it was last week or ten days ago. That makes me think one of three things: a severe ankle sprain, lateral ankle sprain, Liz foot sprain, mid foot sprain, or high ankle sprain. Those are the three that make me. That's what I think of. That's what I would do uh, unless he broke his foot. But they would tell us that. I hope he didn't do anything last week. They knew he was out. They said he's running this week, so it's not a high ankle sprain because there's no way that 10 days after the high ankle sprain, he's running. Like, Saquon is still affected by this. Alvin Kamara is still affected by this. Mohamed Sanu is probably still affected. So, like, these injuries don't take 10 days. They, they just don't in anybody. So that makes me think it was a pretty bad lateral ankle sprain. If he can go, that it's okay to, to go on that. Like, it's okay. Uh, it's maybe he can go. And, and we know he's the clear-cut number one. Didi Westbrook didn't do much last week. Conley got really lucky and smash spot. Um, and he ended up doing some garbage time damage and one saved my, my butt this past weekend uh, with the garbage time, uh, TDs. But, um, it remains to be seen if Chark can go, I would call him probably a game time decision to be honest with you. Okay. Do you have, you have confidence in him in your lineup though, if he is playing as a flex play, a wide receiver three, I don't think he goes up to a one. I, I haven't looked at the matchup, but playing against Atlanta, they, they're without Desmond Trufant. So it's like oh. the defense is not really a worry. Um, just from like an injury standpoint, do you think they'll limit his snaps if he's active? I mean, yeah. I mean, I think, I don't think he'll play the full compliment. I mean, the fact that he was on crutches last week and is, is semi practicing this week is good news, but I don't think he's going to go out there and play 80, 90% of snaps. I mean, look what happened to T.Y. Elton. I mean, they said, oh yeah, he's good to go. He's good to go. And anybody played like he was on the bench on all third downs. Like he, you know, uh, yeah, like I talk about Ty too, actually, while we're here, because he played. Yeah, he. I mean, he got nine targets, so he was heavily involved in the passing game. He didn't do shit with them. He caught four of them for I don't know twenty something yards or whatever. He was in on like fifty percent of snaps, and they said that they're going to increase his snap totals next week. I mean, Ty is just a guy who wants to play out there. It doesn't matter if he's hurt. It doesn't matter if his team's out of contention. But he's a guy that's going to fight to be on the field. Um, so Ty during championship week is that a guy that you you know are thinking about throwing into your lineup? I mean, I I think he has a better chance of doing better this past week, uh, this next week, as opposed to last week. Calf injuries are tricky, man. They injure really easy, re-injure. All right, so let's um, ask, uh, would you play Hilton or Chark this week if they're both active? It's probably got to be Hilton, right? Yeah, I mean, I feel more confident with Hilton. At least Hilton showed me something last week. He got on the field, yeah. said he didn't have any setbacks, was able to – get on there at 50% of the snaps, even though it was a blowout when he probably could have sat. But I mean, um, in there among the three. Now we're really getting down to semantics and and which you kind of need to, but um, I I, read this time. I don't have much confidence in Chark. I have a little bit more confidence. I have more confidence in Hilton than either of the other two in terms That's of. That's how I would do it. I would say probably Hilton, Edelman, Shark right now. Just looking at Matt. Yeah, and, and and maybe I, I think Edelman guts it out. I just don't think he'll be very effective. And I think that Chark, if he can go, he's he'll go. But I don't know. I, I feel like he's a re-injury waiting to happen. Uh, he's one for us too because he, he's just been kind of inconsistent in terms of, of production too. Like he's shown massive upside, and you love his his. He has a great you know bright future, but just for right now, situationally, it doesn't. Doesn't look fantastic for DJ Chark, so I'd probably kind of stay away from them there. I mean, tight ends, there's almost no one that hasn't already been put on IR. We have Evan Ingram, who finally got put on IR, and it comes out, you know. Got Liz Frank, which you've basically been telling us for, like, the last month and a half. And he had surgery. They said he's having surgery, which I knew he was going to. I was just waiting for them to – How long would that keep him out for? Any effect on 2020? No, not really. But depending on how bad the injury is and where the – if there's a fracture, his offseason will be offset. But – 
uh, Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown had his surgery. I want to say it was in January of 2019. And he, I mean, he's had some foot issues this year, but he's been okay. Yeah. Um, I don't have any reason to think that Ingram's going to have any issues. He's all, he's been banged up off and on for a couple of years now. He just, he's never been able to stay healthy. Um, yeah. unfortunately, but uh, I'm not overly concerned about his future, but, but he's definitely at, he's not a cakewalk for 29 for 2020. Okay. Um, then we have a couple other tight ends dealing with concussions. Uh, Greg Olson, I believe was cleared of the concussion protocol today. Vance McDonald was not cleared yet, but is practiced in full. So he probably will be ready to roll. Uh, yeah, neither of those guys are, neither of those guys are suggested starts from my, uh, standpoint. I, I would be surprised. I mean, Olsen's going to be done after this year, I'm assuming. So I'm not sure why he would roll it out there and risk getting a head injury right before he retires. So, I mean, maybe he, one more game to suit him up before he hangs him up. But he's a smart dude. I feel like he wouldn't put his future at risk with his family and shit. So I don't know. Either way, I'm probably not playing either of those guys. Yelled Everett just seems to be out for the rest of his fucking careers. So Tyler Higby, keep rolling. Yeah, we don't know what's going on with Everett. And, and, and Higby, man, man, he's been a monster. My God. Yeah. He went from a nobody to a month. I mean, he got like 12 targets past week. People will, will start asking, you know, Higby, OJ Howard, who's relevant again. Tough question. That's a tough question. I don't think Everett's going to be back. No. I think uh, Higby is safer. I think OJ Howard has a ton of upside, but he's also kind of risky, you know. Yeah, and and up Brown said he's going to hit both uh, Howard and, and Britt because he trusts him. So is this the game that, that Britt has seven targets for two touchdowns? I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, he's down to limited targets. I, I still think that Higby's just been too good for this consistent and just good for the last, like, month that pivoting away from him kind of doesn't make sense at this point. But O.J. Howard, I do think, is a good uh, option, even as, like, a flex play if you're if you're getting desperate and you're, you know, you fell yeah. into the, the hole of, like, owning Dalvin Cook, Mike Evans, uh, you know, Chris Godwin, and you're really in all right now. Like that would Martin yeah. Jones. I mean, you're, yeah, you're all guys. So I, I think OJ Howard is an interesting flex play just because he's probably mm -hmm. just going to play wide receiver this week because that's who they're down to right now. So yeah. uh, I believe that's all we have for today. We made it through the injury list. It's funny, no matter how big or small our injury list is, it basically consumes the exact same amount of time. So it really? doesn't really matter. Um, but it's, it's always a good time when you come in and chat some injuries with us. This will probably be the last episode we do in season. Maybe, maybe we'll figure something out next week if we do want to. Uh, throw something up there for those week 17 championship peoples. Um, but if you enjoyed the video, no, no, don't, don't, don't comment down below. Um, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the fantasy doctors YouTube channel and make sure you are following them on Twitter. to stay up to date on the most recent injuries that are happening around the national football league. I am Nicholas. Get out of here. I am Nicholas. That is Dr. Morse. I got a parking ticket sitting on my car, so I got to move my car. I'll see y'all in next week's episode. Goodbye.